time for Ask the Mayor on KWVE. They're all special programs, but an especially special one today because uh, this is the last time. This is it, buddy. This is it. Stan <laughs> Worth is mayor of the city of Beatrice. You know, Dave and I were uh, talking a little bit this morning about how many times you've been in. We, you know, you had times, of course, where you had to be off on other business sure. and department heads come sure. in. But the best we could come up with over eight years was about 280 to 300 times. That's quite a, that's quite a few, isn't there. it? Yeah. yeah, and time flies. You yeah. really don't think of it. I'm surprised we know. didn't get more comments from the public saying, get him off the air. <laughs> or get that host <laughs> off the air. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, the host has been outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. You've been outstanding as a mayor, too. Uh very special program today. Before we get into the kind of uh, just reminiscing a little bit, I uh, did want to talk about uh, Board of Public Works meeting, which I was not at yesterday. Oh. But there was one item on the agenda. I uh, should mention also that although you were telling me he was not able to be there yesterday, Dave Esker, the chairman of that, he moves over to the city council, too. He does. Know, so and uh, then uh, new um, uh, incoming mayor, Bob Morgan, will um, uh, appoint uh, mm-hmm. the next uh, successor for uh, Dave Eskra as chairman of the Board of Public Works. I see. Mm-hmm. One item on the agenda of the board yesterday was a resolution, a recommendation on a resolution, a DOT uh, functional classification map, how uh, streets or roads are looked at in the city. Right. Any major changes? No, there really wasn't any major changes. There was a couple of things I think that uh, uh, we would have liked to have added, but uh, because of the uh, traffic count, because of some different uh, nuances, uh, the Department of Transportation did not allow that. One of them was through Flowing Springs. You know, uh, there is uh, quite a bit of activity out there, quite a bit of traffic out there. However, uh, it is a planned unit development. And if it's a planned unit development, uh, the state of Nebraska has nothing to do with it. Neither does the city. It mm-hmm. is part of the uh, Flowing Springs development itself. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, streets are broken down into three Uh, separate categories, major arterials, which would include Highway 136, Highway 4, and Highway 77. Mm -hmm. And then you have other arterials uh, that would include uh, streets like Dorsey Street, uh, 19th Street, 33rd Street, all dependent upon traffic count. And then you have collector streets. Collector streets would include Scott Street, 13th Street, uh, Monroe Street, Mm -hmm. and there's several others that would be included in that category. But it basically uh, helps us to determine uh, any additional streets that uh, may fit into different categories. This study has been going on for two years now, Mm -hmm. and Department of Transportation uh, has issued their final report, has agreed with what we have come up with. And again, it is um, uh, some the, the, the higher the priority, the more. Uh, dollars can can be allocated to those different projects. Mm -hmm. And I think last year we had uh, $243,000 of state statute allowed dollars coming from the state of Nebraska for street repairs. I think the um, concrete reconstructions uh, along 4th Street and Lincoln Street uh, was part of it last year, Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the armor coating projects that we uh, undertook. Uh, This next year, don't know what that dollar amount is going to be but it will be earmarked for a couple of different specific projects. Barring like a major shift in traffic pattern, I would imagine those classifications stay pretty much the same year after year after they, year. They pretty much do. Unless, unless you get like a lot of growth in one area of the well, community. And, or and that like is that or... uh, something that was talked about yesterday. Uh, any ar- area that may uh, experience quite a bit of growth, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to see those classifications change and maybe more dollars directed to that specific project. All right. Well, describe, uh, you know, coming up on Monday, what's going through your mind? It'll last council meeting for you Monday night, and uh, what thoughts do you have going into that? The time went by really quick. Um, To begin with, uh, I'll have to be honest with you, I don't know that I like the job that much, um, but it didn't take very long that 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 changed. And, um, you know, it it is um, uh, what, what I think is most... Uh, difficult about uh, the position is trying to navigate through all of the uh, negative comments that uh, you receive from individuals that, you know, why don't we have uh, this this uh, national chain restaurant in our community? Why don't we have this 
business in our community. And, and I, I think people need to just step back and say, there's a reason why they're not coming here. We're a vibrant community, there's no doubt about it. Our population uh, growth numbers, uh, while they have been increasing some, uh, they haven't been, been increasing a lot, and that's what businesses look at. Uh, they want to make sure that you have uh, a vibrant, growing community, that you have population figures that fits into their actual matrix for locating uh, a business here, putting up the capital to locate a business here, spending the dollars. And uh, while we're not going backwards, which is uh, really a, a, a very positive uh, thing, we are increasing uh, bit by bit, and I think that's really important. But um, that's probably one of the biggest pitfalls is some of the the negative comments without any factual basis. Yeah. Somebody hears mm-hmm. something and they say, oh, this is what they said over here, and it's got to be true. Well, it's not true. Yeah. In most instances, um, it, it is uh, baseless based on, on facts. Way back early in this year when, uh, you know, the election cycle was getting underway for local offices and you saw people filing for city council mm-hmm. and council and city council and county board and all those and the mayor's race, uh, at that time, I, I know you had said early on, no two terms are going to be enough, but mm-hmm. do you ever kind of early in that year think that, well, I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe I ought to try for a third. Yeah. And, and I thought about it numerous times, Doug. Yeah. And um, while... I felt that that um, uh, could be a possibility. While I felt, and it's like my wife says, you know, uh, it's my prerogative to change my mind. <laughs> and, and I think that uh, is something that uh, I certainly would have used that in line. <laughs> but um, uh, there, there are things left undone mm-hmm. that I would like to have seen finished. They're in progress, but uh, they're, they're not complete. But as you and I have talked before, there's always going to be something left undone. There's mm-hmm. always going to be something not complete. Yeah. And so from that standpoint, uh, I, I think um, it's just time to walk away and let somebody else come in, fresh ideas. And I know Bob Morgan has uh, some, some good ideas coming forth. And I, I, think that's, I think that's really important just to revitalize and re-energize uh, what uh, what's in, in progress today and what uh, can happen in the future. Well, you kind of already addressed one part of my next question was what's least enjoyable, and that's you're talking about the people commenting things when they yeah. don't really have the information yeah. that's accurate. Uh, but on the other side, what's been the most enjoyable part of it, did you say? I, I think collaboration with uh, all of the departments. I think working closely with city administration, and with all the volunteer boards. Uh, I, I attended a lot of the, the boards where uh, we have uh, n- numerous committees and numerous volunteers on those committees just to keep myself informed, uh, being able to know some of the uh, underlying factors in their decision-making process. I think that is uh, extremely important to, to stay absolutely on top of everything that is going on um, and I, I think the, the cooperation that we have bet- between different entities in the city that are trying to help grow the city, trying to help improve the city, the Chamber of Commerce, and we've said it numerous times, Main Street, uh, the, the county, uh, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's really important to uh, try to maintain that type of uh, communication um, Engage would be another example. I think uh, that uh, economic development is, is extremely important. They're an extremely uh, important group in our community, and they uh, seem to work hard every day to, again, try to improve our community. Mm-hmm. We were speaking also before the program about approaches mayors have taken to that, you know, as far as attending all those meetings and and uh, advisory bodies, commissions, and things like that. There's all kinds of approaches to it. Some may attend very few of them. You've attended a whole lot of them. But do you think maybe by doing that, the quality of your own decision-making or recommendations recommendations has been better due to that? W- without a doubt. And, you know, we have had the, uh, the pleasure of working with uh, a real energetic and I think forward-thinking city council mm-hmm. that... Uh, I, I think the more information that 
the top dog has in the community, mm -hmm. the easier it is to uh, uh, convey that information uh, to those city council members and try to reason how you come up with maybe the decision that you think uh, will um, help improve the community. Mayor Stan Worth with us today on Ask the Mayor, his final program before the switchover and leadership of the city to Bob Morgan next uh, Monday. We'll have more in a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor with Beatrice Mayor Stan Worth, his final program as mayor on uh, KWBE. We mentioned earlier probably right around 280 to 300 programs over eight years, and we appreciate you coming in all that time. Sure. Because I know it's uh, it's not just this half hour. You know, it's basically an hour, and then you got all the other things you got to do for the right. day, your right. job and uh, city business. And you got rid of one of these those got, recently. Got, with, got rid of one of the jobs <laughs> with, in April. With retirement. So. <laughs> got to get rid of the second job, <laughs> yeah, and then so. we'll see what, what, uh, what transpires in the future. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, accomplishments you're most proud of, get things you point to that uh, – whether it might be something physical or a change in how you do business or whatever. You know, Doug, um, that's, a, that's a really good question, and there are a lot of things that I think uh, have been improved. And it seems like some of those become distant memories because you go on to the next, um, mm -hmm. the, the next project that you want to get done. Uh, but to list um, uh, in chronological order and, 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 or in not any specific order is pretty difficult to do. Um, I think uh, the working with uh, people in uh, our, our departments, uh, the department heads and their employees, and those folks work hard every day, again, to uh, improve our community, but to, to, to collaborate with all of the other decision makers that are in our community. I think that's really important uh, to keep that cohesive bond to, uh, again, uh, have, have some forward thinking and vision of, of what our community can be like. Mm -hmm. I may not see it, but um, uh, there are things uh, in the works today that I think are going to be really, really important uh, to the lifeblood of this community. You know, if, if you want to talk about projects, you know, we can talk about recreational projects. Uh, we have a, a, a longstanding list of, of the trails that we have um, uh, accomplished to get uh, uh, completed. Mm -hmm. You know, our parks, our, our parks are outstanding. If you look at uh, uh, our ball fields, it brings in just a tremendous amount of uh, economic uh, uh, dollars into our community in, uh, in the summer with 40, 50 baseball teams, softball mm -hmm. teams in our community on, on, on any given weekend. Um, I think we have worked really, really hard with public safety, and I I lean towards the construction of the new fire station and thank the, the general public for their uh, support of that project. It basically stands as a symbol of, of um, uh, public safety in our community. Uh, we, we, there, there's things that we are, are, are wanting to do uh, to, to, to move forward with uh, adding fiber to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in the process right now. We've signed a contract with a company called Pinpoint. Uh, the Lincoln Street uh, work with the new elementary school going to be um, probably opened in the fall of 2024. Uh, working with those folks to try to uh, improve that uh, segment of our uh, uh, street uh, network. The Highway 136 relocation, we're not actually relocating Highway 136, mm -hmm. but moving the traffic off of uh, 136 uh, to Market Street. That study and, and uh, trying to figure out those dollars uh, of what um, uh, uh, it's going to take. I think the advancements that we have uh, on the Dempster property, uh, EPA has been in there the last couple of weeks and they have put in now into their specific drums, uh, all of the disagreeable stuff that's down there. That does not include the asbestos that will be removed at some point in time. Um, I think um, uh, the strides that we have made with uh, Engage and uh, the, um, um, the, the additional land that we have added to our inventory for uh, growth in our uh, industrial park, just recently added 80 acres, uh, that the city is buying. It, it's, uh, it's really important, I think, to keep that moving forward. Uh, in my lifetime, uh, that industrial park probably won't be filled up. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. But um, again, it is something that you plan for the future. You don't look at tomorrow. Uh, you don't look at the day after tomorrow. You look at 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Yeah, you know, you look at the industrial park back when I think it was basically just empty land out there. And I think a speculative speculative building long ago kind of led to Neapco. Then you look at it today and right. the footprint right. of it. It's pretty amazing. Takes a long time, takes a lot of decades, but... Uh, it's not really all that long of a time when you think about it. Thank it you. really isn't. Uh, time moves by really, really quickly. And I do remember when that uh, those investors took some of their not-so-plentiful dollars and they, they put into this building, uh, knowing full well that they may never see a return on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, as it turned out, uh, the industrial park uh, really exploded. Neapco uh, bought that uh, original building that was out there. And from there, they have expanded numerous times. Mm-hmm. Strengths and weaknesses of the community, not, not, just, not just local governments, but the community itself. <clears throat> uh, what would be some of the, the, the strongest points you think Beatrice has? Or maybe some of the things on the other side that, you know, maybe just needs more attention or something yeah. for the future. I think the, uh, uh, it, it's a small town feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have... Uh, merchants in our community that, that uh, again, are striving to make a living for themselves and their families. And I think we have good, strong businesses that want to continue to uh, uh, grow here and to grow with the community. And I really think our community will uh, continue to grow. Um, I, I think y- you can't overlook uh, our, our um, uh, staff of our city uh, our public works and our managers and volunteer boards, uh, they have nothing but my um, enduring respect and gratitude mm-hmm. for what they do. Uh, they work hard every day to improve our community. I know they get paid for it, but, you know, if you're an electrical lineman uh, and it's midnight and uh, they're, you're trying ten to fix... Ten below zero. Ten below zero <laughs> or more and you're trying to fix a power line and you stay there until the job is completed. Those that remove uh, the snow, that you stay there until the job is completed, uh, in spite of some of the criticism that you didn't do my street uh, soon enough. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I think there is a, a real cohesiveness among individuals. And, and I know this sounds uh, awful flowery uh, of what I'm saying, but it's the truth. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't take long for you to sit in the chair that I've been sitting in uh, to figure that out. Beatrice being a relatively small community, friendly community, and over the years we've seen, you know, nearby Lincoln keep seem growing and growing and growing mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. south. You got the South Beltway project now, and yeah. just every time I go up there, things are changing all the time. Mm-hmm. In the future, as that if that keeps happening, that growth keeps going, what mm-hmm. kind of does that maybe... How would that affect Beatrice, do you think? I think it'll you know? affect it really well because mm-hmm. I think we're going to annex Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> There's a property tax base for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, Doug, I, I think I can't help but believe it's going to have some impact on mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime you have a straight shot thoroughfare, uh, and it's not to Interstate 80 yet, but uh, it, it goes right to Highway 2, which is another four-lane uh, expressway. Um, and th- in the future, it will go from Highway 2 to Interstate 80. I can't help but think that it can't have uh, some type of impact in our community. And that's why I think it's necessary that we have um, land available for those industries that want to uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, take some of their uh, excess dollars and, and build something here. I think it's really important to, again, I say it, say it numerous times that that we have the vision to look to the future. That continued kind of expansion or changing of the landscape, does it carry some potential for, uh, say, a city the size of Beatrice picking up some retail expansion that you might not otherwise have had in past years when you had a bigger distance? Yeah, I really think the possibilities Mm -hmm. are are really endless. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, some uh, uh, buildings available, and I'll... I'll, uh, Go to the Kensington Building, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a large structure that there is a lot of potential there. Mm-hmm. And at some point in time, and uh, I, I hope the legislature, in their infinite wisdom, 
uh, reinstitutes the historic tax credits uh, this next year in the legislature, I think that is going to really add some, uh, uh, I guess, rekindled uh, mm-hmm. fire to that uh, to that building itself. In addition to the Court Street Plaza building, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for retail space there, and I think there's a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, business and industry to look south instead of always going north. We'll be back to wrap up Ask the Mayor with Mayor Stanworth in just a moment. Ask the Mayor with uh, Mayor Stanworth to wrap up the last few minutes of his final program on KWVE as the chief elected official in the city of Beatrice. The uh, changeover to a new mayor and uh, city council arrangement will be next uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. A couple of things just to maybe uh, touch on before we talk about what's going to happen Monday. Uh, Maybe a what are some of the, do you think, maybe bigger challenges for the community in the next uh, five to ten years, whether that's for local government, community as a whole? Uh, you won't be an elected official yeah. taking part in that, yeah. but you'll be a member of the community. Yeah, a member of the community, public what, citizen. What what concerns you the most over the next five to ten years, do you think? Um, I, I, I think... Um, we have to look at downtown Beatrice. We talk about downtown Beatrice, but we have a lot of historic buildings in downtown. Mm-hmm. The trying to decide how we're going to do whatever we possibly can to save those buildings because that's that's kind of a gateway to a community. Mm-hmm. And I think it's necessary that we strive to uh, come up with all kinds of ideas and options and resources available to uh, try to uh, save those uh, buildings as much as possible. I really think that it seems like the biggest complaints that we uh, have are dilapidated buildings. I, I think that uh, probably strengthening the community development department is really something that needs to be taken into consideration to uh, allow them some additional um, uh, abilities to work with property owners to try to clean up properties as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you're a neighbor next to somebody who isn't uh, the best um, uh, best neighbor, uh, that it's necessary that it's, we we try to work with the the one that is not the best neighbor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that is really important to try to keep a a community looking neat and clean and and, uh, um, a community that takes pride in itself. Yeah. you know, there, there are uh, other things that I think are, are larger, larger scale. Uh, if you look at the Dempster building, the Hoover building, uh, those are two big items that have to be dealt with, and they will be dealt with over time, but uh, it's something that just isn't allowable uh, right now. Mm-hmm. And we have to bear in mind that, you know, we have to be careful of, of violating any state statutes. Uh, uh, there are not, not only are there city ordinances, but some of those city ordinances can overlap into state statutes, and you have to be really careful with that. Uh, I think that um, working with the Nebraska legislature on different items is, is going to be uh, important in the future. Uh, well, I, I mentioned historic tax credits. I think that is important. It's another incentive that we can use along with tax increment financing, LB840 dollars, CDBG dollars, to help business and industry grow. You know, one issue that comes to mind, and it's not just Beatrice, it's pretty much statewide, is workforce issues, having enough people to fill jobs, having enough housing for those people that live here rather than commute 40, 50, 60, 70 miles every day. You're Seems absolutely. like a thing that everybody's struggling yeah, with. I right appreciate now. you bringing that up because that is uh, something that is not uh, only something that we struggle with, but every community does struggle with, and child care. Mm-hmm. I know that Engage is working on a program right now to um, uh, in- increase the amount of uh, daycare space within Gage County. I think we are deficient uh, by some 400. Uh, that is big. And I know at the last Engage meeting, I think that, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was something like 93 um, uh, spaces would be made available for child care. Um, but uh, again, it is a, a process that we have to go through. We are working with local, uh, they're working with local uh, child care providers to 
enhance their facilities to accommodate additional people. All right. Well, as we wrap up here, uh, what goes on Monday night? And the big question is, once the changeover is made, are you sticking around for the rest of the meeting? Or are you going <laughs> to... Uh, I have a commitment uh, afterwards <laughs> that see. I'm going to attend. And so, um, uh, no. But anyway, uh, you know, I, my job is going to be pretty simple on Monday. Mm-hmm. There, there's going to be the, uh, the receipt of the certification of the election. Uh, we will approve the public officials' bonds uh, that they have to have in place and then administer the oath of office to the newly elected officials and then I'm out of there. I see. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you, since as mayor, one of your jobs has been to fill vacancies on commissions, boards, whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. Uh, even though you're moving out of the elected arena in terms of local government, you entertain any thoughts about, hey, if the new mayor needs a person for a particular spot that, hey, yeah. maybe that might interest me? Or is that something you kind of want to break away from? For well, that's a possibility. It's yeah. something that uh, I would certainly consider. But uh, there's a couple of other things I'd like to consider also, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Run for local office again? Run for state office? Is that kind of something that's sort of floating around there or not? Um, are, are you? I, I know you've been sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always trying to get one last little bit of information out of you here. <laughs> if I do anything, you're certainly going to be the first to know I about see. it, Douglas. Well, that's, you know... <laughs> Watching shows like Meet the Press, that's the answer that usually is given. <laughs> that's so, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, you don't want to commit yourself <laughs> too early. Well, Stan, I do want to appreciate you coming in all these uh, years and programs because it is, sure. it's a time commitment. You know, you think about how many you've been in on. And, of course, it's given us a chance, too, to bring in uh, department heads and other people, too, right. when you're not here. So right. we do appreciate yeah. that. Well, and I appreciate the opportunity and the venue to uh, talk about uh, city government. It's, it's really important, I think, that we try to um, convey the, the information as uh, accurately as possible. And, it, and I think it's important that it comes from the horse's mouth. I think that's, I think that's really good. And, and really want to thank the radio station for not only the Ask the Mayor program, but here's to your health. Mm-hmm. Uh, visiting with Main Street, the Chamber, Engage, everything that you do to try to keep the public as informed as possible. And I think it's a real tribute uh, to the community to have a, a, a venue, a communication venue like KWBE. Well, and one of the pr- reasons we do it is, you know, as you've seen over the years, Stan, there's not a lot of people that show up to city council meetings sure. unless there's something really sticking in their craw, right, there's a specific. Right. So if we can get information out there, that's good. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and sometimes maybe that is mm-hmm. uh, something that keeps those individuals away. They got their question answered, and, yeah. and I think that's important. Best wishes, Mayor, in uh, private, retired life, and uh, thanks for coming in. Absolutely appreciate it.